Thank you all for being here. And, uh, Thank you so much. So this is, if you see the bottom, this is a paper that Rupa and I took in the American Society of Engineering Education. We published a small paper, and this is the presentation to go with it. It's at the end of it, we put some additional information just for this meeting. So I'm hoping that you can help me a little bit as we go through it. So the title is Teaching Computer-Aided Design Online. Uh, mechanical engineering, you know, is a new thing at UTD. The new thing started in 2008, and uh, all our courses are formal classroom, face-to-face -face type courses. So this is our first attempt to do a 100% full, 100% online class. And uh, so far, we taught it for the first time last semester, and now this semester is being offered for the second time. So far, so good. I'm going to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly about it. And uh, I'm very glad to say that there's more good than bad. <laughs> so this is the course. When you go take computer-aided design at the mechanical engineering department, this is what you need. This is what happens. It's a mechanical engineering class. It says here four, four course learning outcomes or four CLOs are involved. The first one, be able to create 3D geometric models assemblies and engineering drawings so they create the 3d model they assemble multiple 3d models together to create a full assembly and this is all computer aided design but then what they need to do is create the actual engineering drawings the paper drawings that they can send to a machine shop or to a fabricator and the fabricator will actually build the product and send it back so they need to be able to do that and we need to teach that capability so there is a manufacturing aspect to it, even though the course does not hit manufacturing. But the student who finishes this class, they must be able to create a drawing that a manufacturer can read. Mm. The second thing is be able to determine degrees of freedom. When you put two items together, how many degrees of freedom? How can they move? And what do you need to do to restrain them so they don't move? Or if you want them to move, what do you need to do for them to be able to move relative to one another? I'll show some example, one example back to you. Number three, be able to generate fabrication packages. Now, in the world of mechanical engineering, a fab pack, a fabrication package is a series of drawings. I will show one here that's made by the students. Uh, the one I'm showing is about 50 page or 50 drawings that create one package. And the one package eventually presents that to a manufacturer. The manufacturer will fabricate so many parts, and all the parts will come together to create a usable product. So everything that you need in order to start from raw materials available in a store or in a hardware store in order to create the final full product, that's what they do. And that's number three. And number four, they need to work together. So this was a major challenge, and I'll talk about the number four they need to be able to work in a team. So I'm not seeing them, and I don't know what they look like, but they're sitting there in the class watching my video, but they need to be able to work on a team together and produce a 50-page document. <laughs> so that's number four. This is an actual class. So if you visit us in the mechanical engineering of the road, uh, this is on the uh, third floor, there's a room like this. This is the same room different from the left and the right. But you can see each student would sit in front of a computer station and the professor would sit right there and they're projecting on the, the same projection on the two screens. And what happens is you've got certain PowerPoints that have to relay the concept. What is it that we're going to do today? They do that. Once they finish the conceptual then they shut down the PowerPoints, they open the actual program, the 3D program that they're using that day, and they would run a demonstration of how to do it. And ideally what you want to do is the professor to be doing it up there, and there will be about 50 people in this, 40 people in this room doing it together with the professor. And the professor has to slow down, speed up, in order to accommodate everybody and have everybody draw the same thing. So this is the traditional format. The course has been offered since 2008, so this is one of the first classes offered in the year when the mechanical engineering started, and it's been running with us. It's been a very successful class. People like it, students learn, they 
come in and they get out. And when they get out, they know how to do this. They know how to actually create product. So 2017, in the fall semester, was the first time we worked together and we created, and Selena, thank you for all your, <laughs> we were able to actually create this. She was the instructional designer, so she helped me a lot. And uh, it was very nice to see how much support and how much infrastructure we got in this university to do something like that, and to convert that class to it. So uh, 2017 was the first time. We're doing it now for the second time. The online teaching certification is essentially meant to help instructors like Dr. Fada who want to create an online course by themselves without active help from us. Then we don't build the course for them, he built this course himself. This is meant to be a, a self-paced program that helps an instructor accomplish that. And these are the learning outcomes. We talk about online pedagogy versus uh, classroom pedagogy. We talk about policies and practices on campus that as an instructor you need to know before you embark uh, on teaching the course. And also, this is, a, this is a course that simulates a typical online course. So when you take the course as a participant, you are in the shoes of the student. So it, it, it serves as a working model of an online course, as well as lets you experience the student's perspective. As he mentioned, you don't see your students, so it also puts you in the student's shoes. So you don't actually get to meet your instructors. And then the final outcome was to help create some reusable content. So uh, every instructor was given a sandbox, and then that sandbox was used to create some uh, basic e-learning material, like a home page, some announcements, some assignment. And that helps you to get started off with this process. As of January 31st, we had 45 instructors enrolled. Today, the number would be around 50. And around 20 instructors have completed the certification. All materials are deployed inside of e-learning. The instructors are enrolled in an org known as the online teaching certification, and they take it from there. For me, if I did not take that course, this class would have been completely, it would not have been like this. It would have completely gone in a completely wrong direction. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that we have that course because it really, really, really hit and many different points that are extremely important. And tell you the truth, when going through it, it's painful because it's long. <laughs> and uh, you go through it again and again and again, I'm saying, like, wow, what am I doing this? And then, uh, well, there's benefit in doing this. I'm learning something new. And it actually, I felt it was extremely important and very, very good. How long did it take you to go through? It took, calendar wise, it took about two semesters. Okay. Two and a half semesters, maybe. But uh, time wise, now that I look back, it was not as bad as I felt like it was when I was doing it. It's not a lot of hours, but it's just a matter of getting there, clicking it, and getting through it. And there is also uh, things on the side which I didn't know who's reading or what's, where, where's that information going. But it all made sense. By the time I finished, it all made sense. <laughs> so this slide is to just quickly give you a perspective of this particular course. As you know, from yeah. instructional design point of view, we have uh, these three tracks that we offer to assist instructors to create courses. Track one is where the instructor just gives us the subject matter and we build the course for them. So it's a very hands-on approach where the instructor and the e-learning team work very closely together. Track two is when a track one course has been offered once and then it's being rerun, which means there are minimal updates. And once again, we help the instructor with those updates. And track three is where instructors work independently. We provide them with training and consultation, but they put the course together on their own. And so they're really doing course building as well as subject matter control. So track three is where Dr. Fada is at. He built the course entirely himself and his instructional designer was Selena. So he worked with Selena together and uh, that's how this course came into being. And it was very helpful, her help. I, I hope I didn't take too many hours of your life, but your help was very useful because as soon as I started, she would come back and say, you better put links in here, you better do this, you better do that, you better fix the voice. And I did my best to fix the voice, I'll show you in a minute. I did get way at the bottom, I got some comments about the, they said there were some later videos that had voice issues. So I still haven't found those videos, I haven't corrected the issue, but 
we'll see if it comes back again. <laughs> I've got some people on watchdog duty right now <laughs> trying to locate videos that have voice issues, but I have not heard that. This is the course. So if you get onto the course, this is when you first open it. I'll open it in a minute. But this is the course homepage. It has certain things. This is the whole homepage, but if you see the top portion right here, I zoomed in on it a little bit. I still don't think you can read it. But it says this is 100% internet accessible, so we will not be in person. It says, please download the course syllabus. So as soon as they get to the course, the course syllabus is available for them. And I felt that that's important. People actually looked at it. And there's a schedule here that shows them what the deliverables are due and what are we doing this week, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a, uh, it's not, it's in asynchronous. So it's an asynchronous class. But I do not want folks to be working on the first subject while others are working on the fifth. So I put quizzes, and uh, the lectures dispense one after the other, and there's a quiz at the end of each lecture. So you have to watch all that lecture material in order to pass the quiz. And each homework also has some recordings that you have to watch in order to do the homework. So I try for my own sanity, and I really don't know that that's necessary, but for me, I mean, I like to be, to know what the students are doing. I'd like to control them and figure out if there's any problem. I'd like to solve the problem for everyone, not just for. So I made it like that. So that's where the schedule is. And then here, there's a drawing format. So all of them draw on the same format. Course learning outcomes are listed, and open labs on campus are available in case they want to work on campus. And a lot of them actually came and worked on campus. So this is what the whole course looks like from top to bottom. That's the first section up there. This one here is a discussion board. And what a discussion board it has three threads in it. There's introduce yourself at the beginning of the class. A lot of students actually introduce themselves, which was really nice, so I can see a little bit about them. There's one, Ask the Professor, where I got a lot of email, especially the first time I taught this class, a lot, a lot of email, and there was a large mass of email, and sometimes I'm ask, answering the, first, the same question twice. Uh, this semester, whenever I get a question, I say, please ask it in the Ask the Professor. In many situations, I get an email back, it's been resolved. So obviously, they went to the lab, and there's somebody over there doing it. And for me, I much, much prefer them learning from one another than learning from me, because if they learn from one another, there's a much better chance for them to actually learn that material than if I'm just telling them to here, to here. And I get to see their homework. So if there's anything that needs to be corrected, I can still correct it, and I can still help them. But, uh, it's, it was very useful. And then there's the student lounge, where they can put things. They did not use the student lounge much, uh, but the Ask the Professor was pretty busy. The next thing here, there's lectures, all the lectures, all the homeworks, projects, and exams, and then there's a thank you. So truly, if I took this out, if there was no lecture, this would be a normal course. So the only thing that's different between here and a normal course really is that lecture. And I'll show some of the lectures right now. Question, do you teach this face-to-face um, -face as well? I used to, but, you don't but I don't teach it anymore. Okay. There are three sections at UPD. Two other professors are teaching it face-to-face -face and are teaching it online. So the students have the option to take it either face-to-face -face or online. Great, thank you. So the lectures, so if you put the lectures in here, there are eight modules plus other. 3D how to create a 3D part, how to put parts together. So these are each one is a section or a module. How to create drawings for, fab for fabrication. How to understand this business of degrees of freedom. How to constrain things together. What does a fabricator need to see for them to actually create the parts for you? That's the fabrication package. If you send just one drawing to the shop and get it, you, you will not get a chair, you will not get a desk, you will not get a but you need to give certain information so that when the, pro the drawing goes out, part comes back or assembly comes back. And that's what happens here. And then special sweeps, how to sculpture, 
I showed how to make the Oscar statue and stuff like that. <laughs> and then here there's parametric curves. Uh, really the backbone behind all the software. What's the mathematical formulation behind all this program and the software? I'll show some of that in a second. And then surfaces, how to create surfaces and plans and things. These are the lectures. Each one of those is a series of recordings. And I'll show one just in a minute. Uh, this one here is about, for example, fabrication packages. The, uh, uh, once you open the module, you will see certain, a, a series of things in there, just like that. And you can click on each one of them and just watch them, and you can watch them in order, or you can just click around them and you can go up and down. This would be a recording. All my recordings that I did are voice over PowerPoint. I'm not very proud of the way I look. So, <laughs> I prefer for them to see something prettier, or in this case, every, you know, pressure vessels or things that make sense, as opposed to seeing my face. So these would be voice over PowerPoint videos. I made every effort to make them five minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes, twelve minutes. I today I found that there's one that's thirty. So no matter how much you try, how much you prepare, there will be still there's always maintenance and redo and preparation and things. But that's the voice over PowerPoint. There are also summaries in certain situations. You don't want to hear somebody talk for an hour to understand something. The picture will be just enough. One static picture and then some description under it to explain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What do they mean and what do they function and things. So it has a series. Some of them are videos, some of them are explanations, some of them are PDFs that they can download. And there are certain areas that I've been teaching this class for a long time, but there still are certain areas in this subject that I feel like I'm still weak at. Well, there's a buddy at YouTube from some other school that has a video on YouTube that's 10 times better than I would ever be able to do it. <laughs> so I just linked it. There are, I think, three or four videos like that that are in this class that are just links to different professors from different universities. But these are the modules, the lecture modules. And the rest of it is pretty much straightforward. These are quizzes. So if I scroll back, there are eight modules. The first seven of them have these quizzes. There's a quiz at the end of each module. And the purpose of the quiz is, again, to keep the entire population of the class or all the students running at the same rate. So they will all be, right now they're doing, uh, they just finished fat packs and doing parametric curves. So they all are doing the same quiz. And uh, as the modules are, okay, this, is, this first point is, those quizzes are not asking for knowledge. They're not, I'm not asking to learn if they understand the material or not. In the lecture, as the modules are loaded and proved, words have been said. So the first bullet, these are direct questions on words that have been said in that video. So did you watch it or did you not watch it? If you watch it, you should have known what has been said. And that's what that is. So uh, this is not testing knowledge. This is really testing attendance. The quiz is open for one full day, times for 30 minutes. It has only 10 questions and can be taken anywhere. But uh, there is a bank. It has probably 15 or 20 questions for each quiz. And then the students come, they take the 10 questions. So if they take it again, they may not get the same thing. If we step next to each other, you may get a quiz. I may get a different, different order and different questions. So these are the quizzes. It allows two attempts. And there were seven points. So attendance is worth seven points out of 100. These are the exams. This is where we're actually testing knowledge. Do you understand the concepts or not? This is, this has a bank of questions. The 30 questions are asked for each student. There are probably 40 or 50 questions in each quiz. One midterm and one not really final. So there's one exam one, one exam two. There's no final in this class. The tests are given in the testing center. So they go up there and do them up there. The open notes, open book, open notes. They can uh, watch the videos if they need to. They're constricted on time, so they can't sit there for hours. It's a one hour, and they have to 
thirty questions. You have two minutes per question, so you can't post study in there. But if they need any reference for it, there's a symbol that they don't understand. They can actually go to the lecture and get it. Uh, only one attempt is allowed. The exams are worth twenty-three percent of the grade. So this twenty-three plus, if I go back one, that seven, that gives me thirty percent for quizzes and attendance. Have I caused any trouble so far? Good. <laughs> homework. So there are also seven homework assignments. When you, I'm going to show the first assignment, depending on how much time we have, I'll show the first assignment. The first assignment is very straightforward. This is what needs to be done. There's a part. Create that part. And, you know, students love that because they know exactly what it needs to look like when they create it. Once you get to homework three, you get a picture of this. So this is a vice. If I turn this, this goes in and out, and I can put a piece of wood here and squeeze it, and I can hold it in place. Well, I don't want to buy it. I would like to make it. I would like to fabricate it. I would like for you to get angles. This is a U channel. This is an angle. And this is a little uh, wing, wing scoop or wing bolt. I want you to get parts like that and create it. And I give them an example. I tell them, don't follow my example. Create your own. The world is all open. <laughs> you can make a large one. You can make a small one. You can make as complex or as simple as you like. But do not copy mine. <laughs> and I get quite a few variations of ways to do this. What we're learning right now is we're learning that there is an assembly here. This is the full product. It has one, two, three. One, two, three. There are three parts. Because if you look at the bill of materials, it has three components. There's a drawing for the first component. There's a drawing for the second component. There's a drawing for the third component. They caught that. And I can tell that they caught that because my later drawings are getting better. <laughs> They're catching it. So now they can, they can create a simple device with three or four or five, depending on how they did it, components. Progressively hard. The complexity gets harder as they go down. By the time you get to home, as you go down the homeworks, they get harder, and you get less instructions, and you have to do more. So uh, include lecture scaffolding. So a lot of the homeworks, it's not just a homework. There's a homework, and there are some instructions. So let me go back to the lecture. When we said it, in that class, and we lectured in that class, we had some PowerPoints. But then we had some demonstration. We would open the CAD software and we'd show them how to do things. The way it is now is all the lectures are lectures, and they're sitting in the lecture directory. All the demonstrations are support for the homework, or homework scaffolding, and they sit in the uh, homework directory. It helped. It helped, because now the lectures are a lot shorter. When people used to sit in the room watching me talk for an hour and 20 minutes, now they don't. They only get the lecture material that I was going to lecture, but all the demonstrations are together with the homework, and they love those. They sit there and watch them. Do you keep track of um, how many people have, have watched? It keeps track. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one video that I looked, there were hundreds of hits, which really? means multiple people watched. But I didn't look at all of them, I just looked at some. But I did not use that as a tracking method. I just used the quiz. Uh, homeworks are worth 35% of the grade. Okay, fine. Moving on. Okay, this is the project. So, in the project, this is an example. I asked them for permission and they said, please show it. And this is now the number of components. The one I showed you a second ago had three. There was a U channel, there was an angle, and there was a bolt. Now you can see how many. So they progress, 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 and by this time of the semester, they can generate something like that. There are 52 drawings in this package. If we scroll down, this is what they're making. So they want to make a desk, and the intent of this desk is the top of it to go up and down. Um, while you're building it for the first time, you can set it at different heights. And once you lock it, it locks. This is a sophomore level. So they have not taken motors, they have not taken kinematics, they have not taken 
courses that would be sufficient for them to automate the up and down. So you, right now, the way it sits is you set it and place it. And they've got the mechanisms to do that. So this is the desk. It's 38 by 72 inches, 42 inches tall. Now, this is the exploded view of the desk. And now you go in, these are all the pieces that are used to create. And there are 52 drawings in this package. So the reason I like to show this is uh, this is not just joking around. These people are actually learning. And this is, this is the fall of 2018. So this is the online class. And they're able to create, uh, this is the mechanism. So they put a pin in here. They raise it a different time. This is their device. They created that. And uh, they can raise and lower, and etc. So page 50, this is page 52. Um, they're able to do it. They're able to create it. I'm very happy about that. Because in the in the face-to-face -face class, we went back and forth and back and forth in order to do it. In the online class, they watch video after video after video, email after email after email, and now they can do it. make the same. Open-ended. I didn't tell them to make a desk. I told them make something that's important to you. I get a lot of dollies, shop presses, shop tools. I get a lot of desks, a lot of chairs. I get uh, the, my favorite one was a wheelchair, and they made a wheelchair with half the parts that a normal wheelchair would take, because everything on the right and everything on the left is symmetrical. So if a uh, right pedal breaks. There's only one pedal for that chair. The pedal goes on the left or the right. Everything is symmetrical. That was really, 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 really nice. <laughs> that did a really great job with that. Uh, medical chairs. They, some people made an arm. Uh, home door furnishing, portable desks. They love to have the portable desk. They like to study on in the bed, I guess. But something that goes over the bed and they can study there. But uh, this was a royal pain last semester. It was a major, major problem. And I think it says, I want to tell you why, why it was a problem, but let me show this first. I am very blessed at UTD that I've been getting nice ratings, but I have never had ratings like this. This is the actual course book. So if you click on this, I'm not lying, I promise. <laughs> this is the UTD course book. I have not ever had anything like this. Now, you're seeing the enrollment was 48, but only 17 people answered. So this is not a full population. Maybe the ones who did not like the course did not respond. I don't know. But well, that's what I got. responded. Once you didn't to respond. Because you can see here, there's a 6% here. But besides that, there are zeros everywhere on the left. And there is, I put a, uh, a, uh, highlight one item that I don't remember where it was, but uh, this is just a PDF of it here. I like how you gave the students the freedom to do their assignments in their own way. At first, I was a bit puzzled, but later I appreciated the choices you gave us. And we did not have to just do it in one particular way, completely open-ended. They liked that. I, uh, this is not typical UTD. Typically in UTD they say, I do not like the open-ended because I would like to have a problem, I'd like to solve it, I'd like to get through with my life. They like this. So this was a very positive thing. I also love the flexibility of your online class. Again, at first it was a bit, a bit weird, uh, first time taking online. But the flexibility of the online class helps ease some of the stress I had this semester. And then it goes on. So uh, that was the, uh, in here, so there were some that said the online videos, they had problems with them. Two people said that. So I went and watched all the videos. I could not find the problem. So now I've got people in the class this semester watching all those videos. I asked them, please let me know which video has the problem so we can fix it. But that is that. And then uh, one thing here is uh, number five. The instructor was accessible outside the class. So what's the meaning of accessible? 
throughout the entire semester, I saw five, I saw people, five individuals, and that was that. I, I, so only five people crossed my threshold and came to office hours. Uh, what we're talking about here is accessible outside class emails. So there were lots and lots and lots of emails that came through. And accessible means they asked, they got the response. They asked, they got the response. And, and I think they, they appreciated that. It hurt me a lot <laughs> to have to deal with all those emails. I got better this semester because I'm forcing them to use the Ask the Instructor. So when the question comes, I say, can you please ask it in the Ask the Instructor? And in many situations, it's been resolved. In some situations, they actually ask it, and I answer it, and several people benefit. This is the assessment. So I taught the class many times face to face. I taught it one time, and this is my second now to teach it online. Exams, I usually get an average low to mid 80s on the exams. I got 81, so we were in line for where we needed to be. The homework assignments, very comparable quality. If I look at homeworks that are sent today versus homeworks that were sent two years ago in the face to face, there's not anything that's noticeable. Like this is worse or this is better. We're, we're in line. Projects, comparable quality, eventually. There was a lot of drama last semester. And the drama is this. Most of the challenges in this class last semester were related to the uh, project. I had the project include six people. So there were six people who needed to work together. And with six people, you six to the power of whatever to get how many lines of communication are between the six. Uh, there were issues, there were lots of issues and problems and teammates and things and unhappiness. And, uh, what this semester is a little bit different. Broke it down, smaller groups are formed. Four people in a group instead of six. It helped significantly. Second item, teams are required to allocate two time slots for synchronous communication. So this is their deliverable one this semester. In deliverable one, they had to give me primary meeting time, secondary meeting time. So if there were any issues, I'd say, please go to your meeting time, meet as a team, and come back with a final question. I could tell them, if there's any further issues, meet and I'll be there, and we'll discuss, or include me on your phone call, or include me in your go-to, or do whatever you want to do. Let's talk, let's, let's hash it out. It didn't happen. Four was perfect. There were no, I did not have problems. All the problems of last semester did not happen this semester. The other thing is additional milestones. I added additional milestones. I honestly, honestly think all the problems I had last semester were my own doing. So I'm sitting there stressed because I don't know, are they working? Are they not working? Students, I think the next slide says that they don't give feedback. So they don't tell you we're working on this and we're 80% done. They don't do that. They go home and they start working and you don't know what's happening. And I sit there in the office and I'm, my stomach is nuts trying to figure out, are we going to fail 50 people this semester or are we going to be okay? So uh, by adding additional milestones this semester, they, they liked it. I don't have any complaints. Basically, all I told them to do, create hand sketches of what you're going to do. Create a 3D model. Show me a video of yourselves in front of the screen and show me what the 3D model does. I did not have that milestone in there. So I, now they didn't. They sat together and they explained what this, so this would be out of their video. So four weeks ago, I knew that this was complete. This is the other one. I knew it was complete. And now it's a matter of putting it on paper and drafting it. It helped me. So this is something I don't know if. I like to say for people who are going to teach, who are not teaching online right now, is put as many milestones as you need to be comfortable. Because they will do their work, but we just need to be comfortable where we sit. <laughs> the second thing is stay on. They need help, and in many situations, they actually need legitimately need the help. Uh, that is something I put. Uh, 
So the reason why I put that on there is I always thought that an online class, you know, I can just throw the stuff online, go home, relax, and enjoy the ride, and give everybody A's at the end of the semester. It's not like that. It really isn't that. I think I know the students now a lot better than I knew them when I sat with them face to face. Right now, we're sitting in this room, and I see your faces looking at me, and you see my face looking at you. You probably know me, but I have no idea what you're thinking. Some of you maybe can't wait to get out so you can get a cup of coffee. Some of you are probably enjoying this, I don't know. <laughs> in the online, I can throw the video on there, and I, I can, the interaction is a lot more. And people actually send email a lot more than they would raise their hand in the class, in my opinion. <laughs> the last thing is provide resources and have them have stuff to be able to work with. Plenty of room for improvement since last semester, improved a little bit now. Plenty of room further for improvement. This helped a lot. This one here, that the course was 100%, or I thought the course was 100% ready before the new semester started. I thought I had it, and the entire semester, all the lectures were there, all the homeworks were there, everything was there. I was a third teacher. Everything was timed, so it would dispense at a certain time according to the schedule, and it was 100% done. And the second one says, there's really no time to create modules while teaching. It doesn't happen. It would be really a recipe for disaster. But having, in my head, having the course 100% ready for the class is very helpful. Because now I think it's ready, but throughout the course I can always throw a video, I can always throw a recording, I can always throw something, improve things. If a video is not good, I can please do it. If there's something a problem, I can fix it. But it's not possible to start on a new course and just show up and start trying to do it online while. <laughs> so it's offered now. The project seems to be working very well. Uh, yesterday night was the deliverable for the project. I got all teams, there are 10 teams, they all uploaded their projects yesterday. So that was great. Uh, the, we will offer it again in the coming fall, so it will be the third time offered. There is always a need to add and adjust the recording, so I, I'm not planning on a uh, <laughs> cruise next semester. This is, thank you, but I'd like to... Two options, we can either if you have any questions, or I can actually open the course and show some of it. I've got a quick question. Um, as far as drops, have you seen any difference between face-to-face uh, -face and online? I had last semester uh, two, two people drop. Okay. One of them came and said, I really, really did not, I take the first one the second time to improve my grade. Mm -hmm. I did not realize this is going to make me work just as much or if not more than the previous. And the second was a really personal issue. Okay. But uh, So, same as? I don't think, I don't remember having less. drops yeah. before. Okay. But uh, this semester, Last semester I had, this semester I haven't had any. Okay, great. Uh, I know that you had the self-introduction at the beginning of the course. Did you have any other interaction between the students before the team project? Any required responses or peer review or anything or assignments or anything? We put a peer review for this semester, but I've got it gray. We talked about adding that, but I have not added it. I probably should add that. Well, do you have experience with that? I, I have them review different aspects of the course as we go along. Uh, I just wondered if you had that in there or not. What do you do exactly? Uh, I would love to do that. Like they review um, PowerPoints that the students developed or they give feedback on um, uh, small assignments that other students have done or they give feedback on speeches that other classmates have made. And what it does is it trains their eyes to see things that they can use on their own. All right. So are they looking at each other's work or yeah. are they looking at your work? They're each other's work. Each other's work. That would be really, in this business, in actual business, in the business of engineering, there would be a customer and there would be a uh, supplier. And normally the supplier would create the package, send it to the customer, the customer will comment on it and send it back. So that would be very nice. You have to give them criteria to look for. Exactly, there would be criteria. 
So that would be a very nice hour. It's time consuming. I bet. <laughs> I bet. All of it is time consuming. None of it is. Uh, none of it comes easy. But uh, if it's okay, I can open the course, <coughs> or I can ask as or I can just go home. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll be still Okay, I'll open the course real quick. This is the instructor's view. So you see that this is the main page. This is the schedule. And when you click it, it just opens as simple as can be. But when you hit enable editing, it reminds you that we are down here right now. <laughs> so uh, quiz, uh, oh, there's a quiz this Friday. So, uh, but it shows all the homework. It shows what they need to be doing. Very simple, but it actually works. And the syllabus is here as well. The discussion board on the sandbox is empty, but uh, here you can you will see how if it's orange like that, it means it has a question in there. If it's green, do you all use this? Yeah, that's right. Course will page again. These are the lectures. I'm going to open one lecture real quick just to show what approximately they look like. In the 3D part creation. Okay, let me go to student view first. Because they don't see all this. Okay, so this is what they see. And then they go to lectures. Now, this is, it. This is not it. Right now, they should be working on parametric curves. Once they take the quiz, it's not time to the quiz, but it's time to the calendar. On the calendar day, the next module will, sh will show up. And there are two more modules before the end of the semester. But, uh, so if you go to 3D, so when the semester starts, they only see this. They only see part creation, and this case depends on the calendar. This is what kind of looks like, and then you can go between them. I'm going to go to part creation, for example. Can you force them to go in a certain order, or is it open? The once they enter the module, they can go in any order, but the modules get dispensed according to the calendar. So in here, part creation, for example, the first course learning outcome is just like the voice over power in our Mac 33 all scroll down. The model core comes together as we go. It's really telling them the theory of it, the theory of 3D model creation, and it keeps going. And here it shows them that to make the cylinder. If you want to make that cylinder, how do you make it? What's the best way to make it? And here I'm showing you that there's a blue line. So as soon as you look at this, you know that this blue line is that sketch with a certain diameter and it's been extruded to a certain extrusion. Art creation, how to create a part. These are all lectures in general, how to create a part and what it is. Now, once this is done, we go back to course homepage, we go to the homework, for example or assignments. I'm going to go to homework one. So this is homework one and its tutorials. Homework two and its tutorials. Homework four doesn't have tutorials. Now we have they're kind of on their own. Four solutions, this is after the fact. Five <coughs> has very little tutorials. Six has none. I had to add a video halfway through the semester because of multiple questions that they couldn't solve homework six. Homework seven, they're on their own. So complexity is very easy, and it gets harder as they go down. Uh, homework one, I'm going to open that. This is where they upload the homework. But these are all the uh, uh, different modules that help them solve that. So I wanted to go to create a 3D model, for example. <coughs> right here. This is create a 3D model, 5 minutes and 52 seconds. I'm going to work on homework one. This is, and this here is we program. are, if this, we open actually the program, and unit it right here. Okay, how are we going to create it? Up in here, that says sketch, it shows, mm -hmm. if you click on this, it will show to use. It shows the instructions, and it shows me actually doing the actual part that they have to do in homework 1. In homework 3, they see the instructions, and they see me doing something else related to what they want to do. And then they don't see me anymore. This is how this works. Uh, one last thing I like to share is uh, under lectures, under parametric curves, there are hand calculations in here. 
And I did this, and I don't know if this is good or not, but let me So this is parametric curves, uh, example one, scroll down a little bit. which is P prime one four. That's the first derivative. We also need to calculate the first derivative of P one two. Once we have those two first derivatives, what we need to check is there dot product zero or is there cross product zero? I apologize many times for the accent. I can't help it. But what, what this is, the reason why I like to show this, so they have to do hand calculations in this class. Well, I have a very hard time using the dot camera or to use an iPad. I, I haven't made friends with either of those. So what I'm doing here is I have it solved first and I'm just boxing it in and talking them through it. And, and that's how we determine if the dot product is zero, they would be perpendicular. If the cross product is zero, they would be so when u is equal to so zero, this goes away. We have one p1 for equals to p1. When u is equal to straight out of the PDF, I don't know if you all do hands. Do your courses have hand calculations or any pencil related items? No. So this is something I'm doing, and I'm not sure if it's good or not. But you could. Uh Try using a break on the uh, Adobe Studio. I will. I absolutely will. Same experience, bigger screen, but. And also the glass board. The board. Like, oh, what's the one? <coughs> I thought you were talking about the same thing. What's those uh, The it, one is a screen you can write on, kind of like an iPad, but it's like 27 inch screen. Mm -hmm. Or there's the light board, which is the big glass board that you write on. That 27 inch iPad might be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, what software did you use to produce this? This is, just this is just PDF. Oh, Camtasia. 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 Thank you for Camtasia. Mm -hmm. So all the uh, if I go up here, drives, box, go up, box, sync, shared videos, shared videos. So this is the course 3305. These are the videos that make up this class. You upload all these videos into your class, or are you sharing them again? So these videos are under box sync, box sync, shared videos, Mac 305. So all the videos are on my box. Uh, once they're on box, thank you for showing. I go over there into the box through the browser, right click on the file, and say share. Share to anyone with the link. Share. Indefinite, so do not cut it off at a certain time. Indefinite time. And there's a button down there that says copy the link. And when I go to e-learning, e-learning is very light. It doesn't have any of these big videos in there. E-learning just has the links. And everything streams. If you see, uh, uh, some students stream them straight off of their phones. And it's streaming just fine. There's no problem. I. I I would imagine it streams a lot better than if it was actually hosted on the room. This box is quite fast. But the, all the videos are done in Camtasia. Camtasia allows you to, you open the software, you create a window, and you say, I want to grab that window. And it grabs your mouse, it grabs everything that happens in that window, or you can say full screen. And it can do it over your voice. So it's using the laptop's microphone and recording the screen at the same time. And Camtasia is, uh, I guess, UTB based for that, right? You didn't have to buy any special equipment in terms of hardware to create your lecture? Correct. I did not have to buy any software or hardware to create anything that you see. And I guess that's why I say the infrastructure that we already have in here is honestly tremendous. tremendous of doing things like that. Throughout all of this, I found a very nice report. It's called the Online Scorecard. If you're interested, I'll be more than happy to share that. Uh, it's, a, it's a report that's written, and what, what it describes is it has some statements. If you get it from me, I'll send it to you with all the highlights. <laughs> I have that in certain areas. It says, folks who teach online Folks who teach online or who work in an institution that teaches online are very, very highly supportive of the un online education. They see the value of it. And people who don't, who are not teaching online or 
are in a school that does not teach online are opposed to it. Like it's not they, they see no value in it. And uh, same with me. When I started this whole journey, I really did not feel like I did not see it the way it is. And once you get in and see the way it is, it's really, really powerful. I think it's very helpful to students to do this than to sit with me in a room for one hour and 40 minutes. What was your incentive to put it online? Curiosity. More than anything else. I was very, very curious about this. So I started that course with having no input. I did not start the course to teach a class. I started the course just to get, there was a certification. I thought, you know, that'd be the fun thing to do. And then it was a long process and it was, I put it on the back burner for many times. But then when it, when it was done, I approached, approached the chair. I said, I'm, I'd like to do that. He said, try it and see how it works. I tried it and I'm very glad, very glad. Thank you so much. Thank you.